Hey everyone, today I will be doing a video ranking all of Stanley Kubrick's feature length films. Now, he's, it just goes without saying that Stanley Kubrick is one of the best directors of all time. I don't need to say that, but I will anyway. I'm, as I said, I'm only doing his 11 main feature films, so I won't be counting Fear and Desire and Killer's Kiss because they're only like an hour long. But all of his proper movies I will be ranking, so in my opinion. This is another one that might get people a little bit shitty. So if you're going to be one of those people that's going to get a little bit shitty, then don't, because it really doesn't matter. Let's get into it. Coming in at last place on this list, we have Barry Lyndon. Now this is a movie that I put off watching for a really long time. It intimidated me, it's long, it's a th over three hour period piece. It just looked boring. What I got was one of the most brilliant looking films that I have ever seen. Every shot was a carefully constructed painting with beautiful natural lighting. It just had incredible attention to detail and so much effort's obviously gone into it. Unfortunately, my initial gut feeling for this film was correct. This was one of the most boring and unbearably tedious movies that I have ever seen. Like, for me, any technical merit, no matter how good it looks, no matter what, just any technical merit, just completely gets erased for me when the film was boring. I hated every second of this movie. I've heard so many people say, oh yeah, it looks boring, but you've got to watch it because it's actually really, really good. No, this movie is fucking horrible. The acting by everyone was incredibly bland. Who the fuck is Ryan O'Neill? Look, I'm not saying I need to have big name stars in it, but at least choose someone that will put a little bit of life into the character, please. I found every single character to be extremely uninteresting. Anyway, let's move on. I hated this movie. I don't want to talk about it anymore. At number 10, we have Paths of Glory. This is definitely one of his most well-regarded films among Kubrick fans. I did not care for this one at all. There were a couple of good action sequences and some admittedly good acting from Adolphe Menjou and Kirk Douglas. I think I said that guy's name right. I, what the fuck ever. But this movie... You want a movie that is preachy as hell? Watch Paths of Glory. For an hour and a half, I felt like I was being pounded in my face. War is bad, war is bad, war is bad, war is bad, you don't- Like, shut the fuck up! The thing with this movie though is I don't disagree with the statement the film is making. I don't think that basically the plot of the film is that these three men are uh, put on, like, you know, death row or are set to be executed for backing out of a suicide mission. And I think, well, that, that's- why would you do that? Why would you take innocent human lives? So I agree with what this movie is saying. But shut the fuck up! I don't care! It's so annoying! The way they say- yes, of course it's bad! Like, war? It's bad? Wow, jeez, it really made me think. And it was just really annoying, and I just- it just- it could be a little bit subtle about some things, but it just- no, it's not. Also, I'm just about to move on, but I'd also like to say that the ending to this movie is shit as well. It's really stupid. Let's move on. Number 9 on my list, we have Spartacus. This movie is 3 hours and 17 minutes. It's got a long runtime. I mean, it's, it's a really, really fucking long movie. Kirk Douglas in this movie is decent again. There's some good set pieces. There was a couple of great scenes, like especially the one with the fire logs. I thought that was really, really cool and well done. But overall, it was a pretty dull and unengaging story. I... <sighs> with the knowledge that Kubrick was just put on as a, like, a for hire gig where he wasn't able to have full creative control. The knowledge of that kind of hindered it, I guess, as well, because I was watching it and I'm thinking, this is not Kubrick, really. It's kind of just... Uh, it was a very, very tame movie. There was nothing really that outright shocked me or nothing the way that, you know, the story took a turn or anything like that. Nothing that really, you know, like, hooked me in. And just with the runtime at 3 hours and 17 minutes, it's just bloated. It's way too long. It was really boring in most parts, and I just, I just don't care. I just didn't care about this movie at all. So, yeah, let's move on. At number eight, we have Full Metal Jacket. Now, please, please, I beg of you, leave me alone, because from now until the end of the list, these are some of my all-time favourite films. Full Metal Jacket, I think the best word for me to describe this film is just bleak. There is just no hope. It is suspenseful as shit in parts. 
It is extremely disturbing. It has one of the greatest first acts or like, you know, just opening acts ever put to film. The first like 40 minutes of this movie are just horrifying and really well done. I found it just to be so captivating. It's very, it deceives, it's deceiving. You watch it and you think, oh my God, this is kind of funny. And then you realize what's actually going on and you're like, oh no, this is horrible. It can be a very difficult film to watch sometimes, but it's never preachy the way Paths of Glory is. It's merely just showing you. You don't have anyone standing up and, you know, telling everyone what's right and what's wrong and the stuff like you don't have you don't have any of that stuff it's literally legitimately just feels like a peek inside to the boot camp and nam and it's just it's extremely well done and i'm gonna go out and say that i think the second and third acts when they actually go off to vietnam are just as good as the first act i really think it is incredible the reason i think it is lower on the list is just because it isn't as rewatchable as some of these others, especially like, you know, the ones in the top five I could watch just over and over again. Or even like, you know, top six, top seven I could watch over again. So this one's just one that I wouldn't put on as much just because it is a very, very down and dirty film, but it is a fantastic movie and I really enjoy Full Metal Jacket. Number seven on my list. Leave me. Lolita. I liked this movie way better than I thought I was going to. This movie kept me hooked for the entire two and a half hour runtime. James Mason, Sue Lyon, Peter Sellers, all three of those actors were amazing, especially James Mason. He was just, he's such a fantastic actor. He's got such a distinct voice and I really just find him entertaining. The controversial plot was handled extremely well. I haven't read the original book, but I do know that Kubrick made a few changes to try not have it be as controversial. It was an extremely uncomfortable watch in parts. There were parts where I'm just like, oh God, I can't watch this. Not because it's like, you know, disturbing, just because like, you know, the situations that the characters find themselves in. It's not like, you know, played off as comedically, it's played off as like, you know, I don't like this. There are some really great moments of good tension in this movie too. Like. Like, it's, it's just a really, really tense movie in parts. And just a lot of that just comes from the dynamic between James Mason and Sue Lyon and the way they interact with each other. I think it's really good. A fantastic soundtrack to back it off. And overall, I just think Lita is a really, really solid and really, really underrated movie. Number six on my list is The Killing. Yeah, I, I did not expect this to come this high either, but it did. This is easily Kubrick's sharpest film. There is no nonsense here. This movie just chips everything down to the bone without ridding of any substance at all. Fucking lawnmower. This movie is just paced like a bullet. It just goes and it does not stop. It is an incredibly well handled plot. I found it to be a really interesting just movie. Like it's it's a robbery movie but they're you know robbing a, a horse race. It's not like a bank or anything like that. It's, it's just so interesting. I found the characters to be very, very memorable. I really liked all them and their different motives. I really loved the awesome jazzy soundtrack too. It was just, it just, this movie basically has everything you want from this kind of a noir crime film in the 50s. It's, it's, it's just so good. It's so good and it has an ending which will simultaneously leave you bursting out laughing and have your jaw on the floor. The Killing is fantastic. I love it. Number five is Eyes Wide Shut, or as I like to call it, Eyes Wide Shunt. Has anyone here seen Society, directed by Brian Usner? If you have, please let me know, because just that movie. Anyway, Eyes Wide Shut, this is where it is on the list. I loved almost everything about this movie. This could go up into my top three on a rewatch, possibly. It's unbelievably mysterious. Like you just don't know how anything is gonna go in this movie. I just went into a blind and I was just like, what the f how does any of this gonna work back in or, you know, can't go it's just so strange, so mysterious. The dialogue is extremely well written. There is a scene with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman probably about 20 minutes in, maybe a little bit more. And they're just talking and I was just on the edge of my seat just trying to listen to every single word that they said. 
I, I was just so enthralled and entranced by it. Uh, Tom Cruise in this movie is outstanding. He is incredible in this movie. I'd say, like, you know, you watch like Top Gun and Days of Thunder and stuff, and he kind of just stands there. But in this movie, he was fantastic. This movie is so atmospheric too. I, it's one of those ones that really sucks you into other worlds when you watch it. It has a fantastic use of music, which just is really catchy, but dreamlike and creepy, and it's just fantastic. It's so weird and shocking. I watched this movie when I was home alone. Well, I wasn't home alone, actually. My brother was home, but my, my parents weren't home. And that was a good thing. But my brother walked in on one scene, and it was a scene, like, I'm just gonna say Fidelio. If, if you've seen it, you know what I mean. He walked in, and he just walked in, and he's just like, What the fuck? <laughs> it's so bizarre, and it's just so unique. It lingers in the mind. I will never, ever forget this movie. And... Honestly, the final line of this movie is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, Eyes Wide Shut is a great movie. Can't wait to rewatch it. Love it. At number four on my list, we have Doctor Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. This is Kubrick's only comedy film, and it manages to be a comedy film mixed with suspense. Peter Sellers in this movie plays three different characters, and he just he just carries it. Just he's so goddamn good. Even George C. Scott gives a great performance in this movie too. He's very loud, very but he's so, so good. It's very satirical. It's very, very, like, I don't know how to say it, but it's, it's a very, what's happening in this movie is extremely fucking depressing, but it's handled in a way that just makes it hilarious. The plot, like the killing, is tightly packed. It's like a 90 minute movie. It just zips by. And the ending of this movie left me in stitches. It has one of my favourite endings to any movie. I think it, it is fantastic. And overall, Doctor Strangelove is fantastic. But there are three more that are better than it. Number three, we have A Clockwork Orange. Now we're just getting into the films that scream the word or the name Kubrick. This movie is ballsy. And I mean that this movie is Ballsy as fuck. I watched this movie in 2022. A Clockwork Orange was released in 1971. I watched this movie now, and I was like, most people would not have the guts to do this today. Like, it is crazy. It's extremely funny too, which is one of the things that I was most surprised by, is how funny this movie is. There was just so many parts where you just start laughing. I think a lot of that is the way they speak and their little Drugian Nadsat language. It's 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 a really funny movie, but it's an extremely violent movie. It's an extremely gratuitous movie. It's a horrible movie. It is a sickening movie. And above all, it is a disturbing movie. It is weird. It is a funny film, but it is so horrible and so just nasty and mean-spirited and nihilistic. And like, I just... I, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about it. But at the same time, it blends all those themes perfectly. Like, there's never once when I'm like, this movie feels confused. It's, it's a movie that is made to confuse the audience on how they should feel. It's not like a confusing plot or anything, which we will get to soon, but it, it confuses you in how you feel. Like, it puts the audience into such a vulnerable position and you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be feeling right now. I don't... Cause this is such shit thing is happening. This 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 something really bad is happening to someone, but this someone has also done really, really bad things. But how does the bad things that are happening to him weigh out in comparison to the bad things that he's done to other people? It's just so interesting. That's the thing with this movie. It is just interesting. It has some of my favourite set design in any movie ever. Like, especially the Alexander house. I love their house. It's so weird and unique. There are great costumes. I really, really want to get the Drew costume. It looks fucking cool. Malcolm McDowell in this movie is just unbelievable. Like, seriously, incredible. 
like a great performance by him and there's milk in this movie too which is fucking disgusting but still number two on my list listen it, these ones are hard to pick between because they're both easy 11 out of 10s but at number two I'm gonna have to go with 2001 a space odyssey what do I even say about this movie that just hasn't been said I just this, I'm speechless with this movie. I not once found this two and a half hour long movie boring just at all. All the lingering shots were hypnotizing and didn't feel pretentious the way they did in Barry Lyndon. In Barry Lyndon, you could basically hear Kubrick jacking off to his own cinematography, whereas this movie just feels like a work of art. It has one of the best atmospheres in any movie ever. There's not a lot of talking, which I just find so unique and it just it works so well in the movie's favor it sits in my mind 24 7 just the mystery of it all it is one of the most mysterious movies just of all time where you just you just don't know anything and you never will know anything one thing about this movie, it doesn't feel implausible it feels like it it part of it feels real to me which i find so weird but it just doesn't it feels like something that has actually happened in outer space away from our earth away from our planet it, it just it's it's amazing i legitimately cannot understand how this came out in 1968 if this came out 20 years from now it would be groundbreaking and it is a must-see experience for every single person on this earth it is amazing now at number one we have the shining now this is just it's not just my favourite Kubrick movie, it's just my favourite movie of all time. Like, it's what got me into movies. I watched this movie just on a whim. My brother's like, oh, you wanna watch a movie with me? I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I watched it and I was like, movies are cool. It opened me up to a whole new world of movies and not only movies, but also books as well. And Stephen King, it's just, It'll probably always be my favourite movie for that. And nostalgia aside, I think this movie is fucking just beyond perfect. Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, like, they're so... The, the most real performances at the same time, but also embodying what makes the actors them too somehow i don't know how the i don't know how to say it but it's so good i said 2001 space odyssey has a great atmosphere the shining has the best atmosphere in any movie ever i think it gets creepier and more mysterious every single time i watch it each time I watch this movie it does legitimately get scarier because i pick up on things that i never saw before and i'm like wait what what does what does what does that mean where's where's that come into it or how does that come into it or does it come into it at all is it just a creepy thing that's meant to make me think and just about all the mysteries and just all the things that have happened that we'll never get answers to there's just so much iconic imagery the score in this movie is amazing i do not care if people say that this movie is overrated or if they're sick to death of hearing about it it is unbelievably good my heart has never beaten faster i love this movie so much I'm thinking one day I might have to do an in-depth analyzed review on this movie because just I'd like to talk about it for a good half an hour or so but anyway 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 that is my Kubrick ranked list please let me know your ranking of Stanley Kubrick movies in the comments if you'd like I'd really like to know it's always nice to hear other people's opinions and please tell me if you do happen to like Barry Lyndon or Paths of Glory or Spartacus if you're fucking insane but yeah anyway I'm, I'm it was a joke. Um, I'll see you all next week. Bye.